Hello everyone, welcome back to lecture 37. So, in this uh, we will continue where we stopped in the last lecture, we will look at the atomic force microscope and particularly the technical aspects uh, before we go in to look at the examples. So, what we have done on the last class was looking at the force curve and then familiarizing the mode of operation. So, the mode means like at which force range you are basically just operating. So, here I told you like this are the very broad uh, classification. So, like the non-contact and the contact mode and in indentation mode. So, we also have seen that depending on the operation mode, you can basically just kind of understand different things because we know that in the non-contact regime, you have basically typically the the attractive forces and in the contact regime you have the uh, repulsive forces and in the indentation mode is something where you really indent the, the cantilever tip combination or the tip into the sample and we look at the uh, hardness of the material or force um, that is required to deform the material. Now, although uh, this looks very interesting, this kind of a force curve is not something you cannot find in the ambient condition. So, this is a force curve therefore truly applicable in high vacuum or in ultra high vacuum definitely. Uh, because in the ambient condition, you are going to have additional influences due to the atmosphere. So, you have like wet atmosphere, high humidity, you can have hydrophilic forces, hydrophobic forces, many bulk forces are actually acting on the tip cantilever combination. So, you will never be able to see this kind of a typical Leonard Jones type um, uh, type force curve um, in the uh, ambient condition. So, therefore, whatever you see here is a very uh, um, is a very idealized picture, yeah, or, or very in principle picture. And but this is actually something you can reproduce inside an ultra high vacuum or in a high vacuum chamber, yeah. But uh, you will also see that atomic force microscope has been widely used in ambient condition because you would actually sometime come across with biological samples or with um, any type of metal. I told you that this is this mode or this method is much more versatile than scanning tunneling microscopy. So, therefore, you will also find it in normal conditions, ambient condition. In that case, the force curve has a slightly different shape. So, that is what I want to basically just show you here. So, I again have this kind of um, uh, separation between the force uh, between the tip and the and the surface and the force, but here it's going to look slightly different. It's going to look like that you approach so that everything looks good. So it initially it would just have a very very small variation in the force or so something like this. You would observe, then suddenly you would find tuck uh, a gem to contact. And so this is because. Uh, the, the, the moment you basically just come close, so there is a huge force that is acting onto the cantilever and the cantilever force constant is not basically just capable of withstanding that force and then it come directly to a contact to jump. So, then you it will look basically like that. Yeah? So, once you are in contact, so that means somewhere in this regime here you are already in contact, in contact and then when you increase the or when you approach again further, then you basically just get into the material. So, this is already the indentation mode. Yeah? So, this is the slope again is interesting because the slope is directly df by dz, which is actually the so called deformation or the hardness of the material. Yeah? And then when you go back, it is not necessary that you will always go along the same path. Yeah? Because you have a strong adhesive force, it may actually just go with a slightly different path that it would even look like this and then finally, it would just go like that. Yeah? So, this so called huge dip is actually corresponding to the adhesive force between the tip and the surface. Yeah? So, in ambient conditions, ambient conditions, uh, this is actually something which you would commonly observe and this would be something applicable in ultra high vacuum yeah because the model that we have used is actually like two atoms coming closer and this is where you do not have any medium in between yeah so that's the reason why this type of a force is actually something you observe in in high vacuum or in ultra high vacuum but typically in ambient condition 
you would see a force curve that is of this type. Yeah? So, that is the thing that you have to keep it in mind. But it is not an issue, but it is actually having different applicability and therefore, you can basically just apply that in different conditions. Good. Now, let me just show you the most important thing which is actually the cantilever tip combination. So, I have actually a few scanning electron micrographs. So, that is like electron microscopy images of a few different type of cantilever. So, you can of course now commercially buy them. The STM tip you remember you could actually just make very easily. So, you have to take a very thin wire, you have to use a mechanical cutter, cut it and then you have a tip. But here it is not possible because you want to have a cantilever associated to a tip. Therefore, you have to basically just process this um, using different uh, techniques and then you basically just buy it uh, commercially. Yeah? So, this is it. So, this is the cantilever part and this is the tip you can see and of course, you can get different type of cantilever part and also like tip. So, they are looking slightly different and, and also depending on the application. Yeah? Mostly, the material that you use for making the, the tip is actually kind of silicon nitride or silicon. They are um, easily millable. So, this is all uh, ion milled structures. So, they are actually easily millable. Uh, they, and also the hardness of the material is good enough, therefore they are actually just kind of a preferred material. But you can also get tips which are actually uh, having uh, gold, platinum, you see diamond coated to increase the sensitivity of the measurement. Because you remember like whenever you have a cantilever, you need to have a laser reflecting on the back side of it, so to, to get basically the position sensitivity. Therefore, it is also important that the back side of the cantilever must be coated with uh, gold and platinum and diamond coating is basically to increase the strength of the tip itself. So, there are different kind of uh, things that are available in the market and, and this will all increase the sensitivity and the selectivity of the force. This is very important. And you can also just buy this uh, chromium or cobalt coated for particularly magnetic force detection. So, you will also see towards the end of this topic that we will also be looking at something called magnetic force microscope. There to get the magnetic contrast, what you need is actually to coat this tip using a magnetic material. Yeah? So, you need to basically coat with chromium, cobalt and so on. So, this is something that we have also done, you remember in the case of scanning tunneling microscopy to make actually that magnetic sensitivity. So, you need to have like a ma magnetic materials coating. So, this is the, the main important thing or the heart of the atomic force microscope itself. Now, let me also show you um, a few more technical details about a cantilever. So, this is of course not the entire chart. This is a, a very, very simple schematic that I am showing. A cantilever, so this is basically the cantilever and the tip. So, this is uh, the most important thing. And the cantilever has a very specific length, width and thickness. Yeah, so, this is something you can see here and that will define the eigenfrequency or the frequency of the cantilever. So, the cantilever can basically just even oscillate at, a, at an eigenfrequency if you excite and that eigenfrequency is quite important because you will see that there are special modes for that it is quite important and also the force constant. Yeah, so, you remember the force constant is important for us because if you want to actually calculate the force from the deflection, you need actually the force constant. So, therefore, the force constant and the eigenfrequency is basically def defined by this geometrical parameters like um, length, width and thickness of the cantilever and that will define these two parameters and they are very important because you can see that this kind of a, a tip with a high force constant is normally used in, in a mode called non-contact tapping mode. You will see what is that. Uh, and then this kind of a soft cantilever, you see like here the force constant is basically uh, 0.18 um, newtons per meter uh, and this kind of a cantilever is something that you use for contact mode. Yeah? So, but there is a big list, of course, I did not want to actually just bother you with that list, but whenever you are actually getting into the application, you can actually just understand that in a, in a greater detail. But what I want to, to show you or what I want to basically tell you that depending on the application, you need to basically choose different type of uh, cantilever. But there are also cantilevers without tip or with, a, with just a, a spherical dot at the, um, at, the, at the apex. If you want to only do kind of mechanical 
uh, force measurement on different surfaces and so on. So, you can get a variety of uh, tip uh, cantilever combinations. So, now all the modes that I have talked about is actually kind of um, non-dynamic mode. So, that means your cantilever is actually stagnant uh, and you have a tip and you are basically just moving the tip across the sample. So, that is what you do. But in the beginning of the discovery of uh, scanning, uh, sorry, the atomic force microscopy, people were mostly preferring to do contact mode because that contact mode was the one with which you can actually get a better resolution. The, the reason is very simple. If you recollect actually the force curve that we have just drawn, the force was looking somewhat like this. So, this is the distance and this is the force and typically if you look at the non-contact region, so that means in this region, what you see that the variation in the force as a function of distance is rather small compared to the contact region. So, here you can see the contact region, the change is actually much, much sharper. That means for a small change in the distance, yeah, so like here again, the so-called delta Z, I have a large change in the force delta F. This is something which decides the resolution of a microscope. Yeah? That means the so-called sensitivity of Z deflection is much larger for actually the contact region. So, that actually is due to the nature of the force itself. So, because you have this very long range uh, attractive forces, so the force is basically varying very, very slowly with respect to distance. Therefore, generally contact mode was preferred in the beginning. So, but the problem with the contact mode is this. You see like I have here a circular object, which is now when I do the contact mode, there is a very high chance that I would actually just deform it, yeah, because the, the, the tip is actually going in a very, very close vicinity of the surface. So, there is a chance that I can basically deform things on the surface. So, if you for example, want to understand something with molecules, with biological molecules or with soft samples, polymers and so on, the moment you actually just scratch your tip over the surface or in a so-called contact mode, there is a huge chance that you basically deform the surface and whatever you are seeing is something like deformed surface and not the true surface. But of course, we still want to do the contact mode. So, that is clear because the change in the force is much more sensitive or much more uh, detectable um, is in the contact regime. So, therefore, we want to do the contact mode. So, then people thought, well, why can't we do something like a dynamic mode? What do you do? You basically take the cantilever and activate the cantilever and let it resonate at its resonant frequency. That means the cantilever is all the time vibrating at its resonant frequency. And now the interesting thing is now you can look here. The, this is basically in the contact mode, the path that the tip follows, it is kind of a linear path. But in the dynamic one, you are going to basically just do this kind of a path because your cantilever is all the time going up and down. The advantage is you can almost go near to the surface, but the point is the time of contact is very, very, very less because the tip is actually not coming all the time in contact to the surface. So, ideally the tip is coming in contact, it is going back, come in contact, it is going back, again come in contact, it is going back. So, therefore, in the dynamic mode, you basically do not deform the sample of the objects that are actually just present on the surface. And therefore, you can see here, I can basically see my object that was originally circular in shape is actually having no deformation because the contact time while you just pass your cantilever tip combination around that object is very, very less compared to the contact mode. This is generally therefore known as dynamic intermittent contact mode. So, you are intermittently contacting the surface, but not continuously like in a contact mode. So, this is a, a very, very sensitive mode. And that mode, therefore, is able to analyze soft materials. And the interesting thing now is that since you are actually just moving at a resonant frequency, what you are basically just going to measure is a change in amplitude, phase, and also the uh, uh, frequency, the resonant frequency. It is actually what is shown here. If this would be the resonant frequency of the cantilever, yeah, 
And now, when the cantilever is coming in contact to the surface, you can basically have the attractive or the repulsive force. So, depending on the type of the force, your cantilever resonant frequency would go down or upward. That means, I can basically measure continuously the change in resonant frequency and also I can measure the change in amplitude of the, uh, of the uh, frequency or I can basically also change the phase shift. This is quite interesting. I am not going to show a lot of details, but phase shift also has something to do uh, with the material contrast. It actually can resolve material contrast and you can basically just see uh, these kind of uh, changes you can basically measure in the dynamic um, uh, in the dynamic mode or generally it is known as a tapping mode, yeah? uh, but it is a dynamic intermittent contact mode. So, that is very good. So, you can basically now uh, do not worry about the deformation of your sample or the, the surface itself. You can actually gently work on this mode and you can nicely analyze the surface even if it is having soft materials. Yeah? So, that is the interesting thing. I will show you a few examples to convince you the fact of dynamic mode and dynamic mode is actually now the most popular in fact. So, now here I have basically an image of uh, a biomolecule, DNA molecule taken in contact mode and in tapping mode. So, this is not a simultaneous mode, of course not, you have done it in a, in a separate way. So, the DNA molecules are actually just sticking on mica surface. So, there is again nice crystalline surface that you can uh, use um, and there you see basically that when you do the contact mode, you can basically see that of course, you see kind of strandy structure, but you cannot basically resolve the details because there is lot of deformation um, or flickering that is actually happening to the strand itself. But now you see when you do it in the tapping mode, it is really beautiful. You can clearly see the DNA strands uh, separately. You can even see tiny bit of details and you can even see on the surface small features are actually nicely resolved compared to what you have actually seen in the contact mode. So, this is beautiful therefore. Yeah? You already see that the quality of the imaging is improved to a very, very high magnitude and also you have a high lateral resolution. So, that is the, the major issue. Yeah? Otherwise, every time you are deforming your object that you are looking is actually deforming and it is basically even increasing the, the size of it. Yeah? So, that means you are not really measuring the actual size of the material. Then what you, since you are actually just applying only coming uh, uh, and very gently and in, in, in an intermittent mode, so you actually just cause less damage to the surface and um, therefore, uh, there is no lateral force that is basically applied between the tip and the sample. So, that is very very useful. So, therefore, what you would basically find that most of the time tapping mode is something that is uh, very commonly used in ambient conditions uh, and also in, in, in ultra high vacuum and, and it has been also like uh, been widely used for biological samples and so on. So, that is the reason why I also thought of showing you this particular example. Uh, you can see a, a few more details in this um, uh, online source but uh, you can actually also find that in, in general literature. Well, I also have here uh, a nice um, uh, image of an add layer of molecule on, on surface. So, I have here a graphite surface and the molecule is basically adsorbed. So, the molecule is kind of a ferrocene derivative. So, this is a sugar derivative of ferrocene and what we do like in the uh, previous example we have looked at, we basically just kind of self-assemble this molecule on the surface and have a look how they self-assemble. Yeah? Now, this dark region is nothing but your graphite, your graphite and these bright regions are the molecules. So, these are the molecules. So, molecules, molecules and here you also have molecules. So, there are two different type of molecular arrangements. So, one is more like a, a non-crystalline amorphous phase. So, that is what you see here. This is basically amorphous and then you have here this blue region which is corresponding to a very crystalline molecular arrangement. So, that means the molecules are nicely making this self-assembled pattern there. So, there the molecules are actually just forming long, long uh, islands uh, and that is what you see. Now, uh, I can actually just zoom into a small region inside and then you see these kind of lines and these lines are actually corresponding 
to this kind of a dimer chain of a molecule. So you have this molecule has a, uh, a capability to form a kind of strong hydrogen bonding mediated through this carbonyl group and then what they do is they form a dimer and they actually just make this kind of nice chains and those chains are something what you are basically just visualizing in this image. So that means using the tapping mode you can basically just image nicely globally and also you can go down to a very high resolution and also you can see things at the molecular level. That is the interesting uh, thing about uh, this particular mode of operation and therefore I told you this is the mode that we are going to be generally used if you are not interested in understanding the friction forces uh, of the surface. Yeah? So that is the, the, the aspect. Now, when it comes, so, so far what you have seen is that all the time I have been showing you like images which is not as resolved as in the case of STM. So, the question is, is it possible to really resolve um, at the atomic scale? Is it possible? Well, the answer is yes, but there are a lot of conditions in this case uh, compared to scanning tunneling microscopy that you need to take into account, particularly you need to take into account about the sensitivity of the cantilever because the problem is it is not just limited only by the tip, you also have a cantilever associated with it. So therefore, the cantilever quality or its sensitivity in detecting the force is very, very important. Yeah. Then the nature of the sample, if you are actually just taking a sample which is actually hydrophilic in nature, so you would never going to get actually an atomic resolution at that because the surface is always going to be covered by water and if you want to, to work with that, you are not going to basically just end up in quality images or if you have a surface which is extremely soft and then you are not going to basically see much. So this is quite important. So therefore, the nature of the sample and also the flatness of the sample or the atomic uh, flatness of the sample is very, very important. Then the condition, as I have already told you, you have seen in the, in the previous slide that I have showed you like the typical force curve like uh, you would expect or the theoretical expectation is only possible in vacuum. In ambient condition, you see there are strong forces like the uh, ad ad adhesive forces hydrophilic, hydrophobic, whatever force that you name, you have strong forces that is actually uh, um, acting on the tip, therefore you do not have much um, of a chance in getting um, high resolution or the so called atomic resolution in ambient condition. But nonetheless in the previous example I have showed you that you can go down to a certain level and you can see um, features that are corresponding to the molecular details but not an atomic level. Therefore, it is quite important, you will see that is what I am going to show you in the next slides, that vacuum is very important. When you have vacuum, you would basically just avoid or uh, eliminate a lot of conditions um, that is necessary for doing the measurement and then you can get the actual measurement done in vacuum and then you can actually get atomic resolution. I will show you that and then of course, the most important thing is the size of the probe. So that is of course like you expect. I have here an interesting scheme to show you. So if you imagine that this is the object that you are actually just trying to resolve on the surface and if this is the A from tip and then if you basically just move the tip across this object, let us move the tip. But since the, the diameter or the size of the uh, uh, tip is, uh, is actually decisive, you can see because you have a larger size the tip would always follow a path like this and then it will basically end up at a position like this. So that means what you are going to image is something like this and not the real size of the object. So this is what the real size is, so like the real size of the object is just this much but you see what you are measuring is this exaggerated size uh, in AFM. Yeah? Therefore, it is quite important to have actually like a sharper tip and if you are making the tip sharper and sharper, there is a chance that you would basically just end up somewhere here uh, and then you can basically just get an image uh, which would look like this. Yeah? So therefore, it is quite important to use a sharper tip. So this is actually for a sharper tip sharper tip yeah? 
and the other one for a broader tip. Yeah, so that's uh, quite important. Now, well, uh, therefore, it is uh, limiting to to basically just do this. So, therefore, people thought uh, we can basically now uh, think about making an extremely sensitive tip and an extremely sharp tip, like an atomically uh, sharp tip. So, can we do that? Yes, if we do, and everything to be done inside a vacuum. So, by combining an extremely sensitive cantilever inside ultra high vacuum using an atomically sharp tip, people thought let us make actually a kind of special cantilever. So, this cantilever is actually known as a cupel sensor. This is nothing but a tuning fork. It is not anymore a cantilever. It is a tuning fork and this particular tuning fork is actually originally used in, in a Swiss watch. That cantilever, you can actually connect a very sharp tip. So, that is nothing but a metallic tip like you use in STM and then this is actually now connected and this would be your cantilever and this is nothing but the tip. Yeah? So, now you have actually an extremely sensitive cantilever having a very high force constant and a very high frequency and then an, a, a sharp tip. Then what you can do is you can basically resolve atoms. So, now you have the silicon 111 7 by 7 reconstruction. You see basically the same thing that we have observed previously that each of these bright spots are nothing but atoms. Yeah, that is the interesting thing. Or I can actually just go down and measure the graphite and you see here I have clearly this nice hexagonal pattern with three uh, atoms being brighter and the other atoms are actually just kind of a less bright and therefore I am basically able to resolve the atomic resolution using this. So, therefore, this is done inside UHV. So, this is quite important ultra high vacuum using a cantilever this which is extremely sensitive and then you can basically just measure the uh, atomic resolution. Well, I can also therefore combine it. Now, you think about that this particular cantilever is also having an electrical connection and the cantilever itself is actually uh, conductive. Then, I can simultaneously measure the current and the force together. So, that is actually the combined atomic force microscopy and scanning tunneling microscopy. This is a beautiful technique which is a combination of two most important uh, tools in surface science coming together. Then what you can do is you can basically just measure simultaneously the scanning tunneling micrograph and actually the atomic force micrograph. Yeah? So, you remember that in scanning tunneling microscopy, what you are basically just looking is the kind of um, electron density of the surface and that is the reason why you are only able to resolve these alternating uh, atoms um, of the hexagon of, of graphite, but you can see that is not the case in the in, in AFM. You can basically just see the entire hexagon with three atoms being slightly brighter than the other because this corresponds to the uh, B side and this corresponding to the A side of the graphite. Yeah? So, please refer to our previous lecture that we have already discussed it and now you see that you have an absolute skeleton of the surface. So, the surface is absolutely imaged using AFM. So, this is very, very beautiful. Yeah? So, now we have an AFM, uh, we have a technique with which we can basically just go down to atomic resolution and resolve things at a greater uh, detail. Yeah? So, in the next class, we will see a few more examples and a few more interesting applications of scanning tunneling microscopy and the AFM together. So, that is the interesting aspect and um, we can actually just come up with that. So, today, uh, right now, this lecture is concluded. Uh, thank you very much for your attention.